could I be more excited about this, 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 these. I'm so excited, oh my god. Guys! And that's not even like the tip of the iceberg. What about this? For the historical fiction as well. Uh, Okay, now I'm gonna have to rewind because I got that all wrong. I feel like all my TBR videos are me just going, I wish I could read all of these books. <laughs> I feel like all my TBR videos are just me rhyming off books that I hope I'll get to, that I wish I could read and it's hard. It's hard to choose, isn't it? Isn't it so hard to choose? It's me, Jess. I'm back. She is back. <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, I am actually back <laughs> from my trip to the UK, which I heavily, heavily documented on Instagram. For those of you that follow me over on Instagram, if you're not, you should. You know, you wanna. And I did take a lot of footage. Well, I think I did <laughs> at this point. It's all a bit of a muddle in my mind. But I think I took quite a bit of footage, certainly enough to make a vlog. So I just have to cobble all of the pieces of footage together. And I think it's going to take a little while. So be patient with me, but a UK vlog will be forthcoming. That's not why I'm here today. I'm here today to talk about my June TBR a little bit late because travel did, well, let's just say travel came first. <laughs> I have a lot of books that I want to read in June. I think it's an incredibly ambitious TBR, which usually my TBRs are very ambitious, but I also have completed all of my corrections. Today is, no, not today, Monday will be the day to put in all of the final grades. And I really think that I'm on it, everything's done. So I feel like it's possible that I will read a bit more. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I hope to read a bit more. I was gonna try something a little, un a little unusual for me, which was I was thinking that this month I would experiment with reading, aside from a couple of exceptions, reading books cover to cover, <laughs> which I don't normally do. Let me know in the comments below what your reading habits are. I often have three, four books going at the same time just to keep me, I guess, engaged. I don't know why, but I feel like I need to hop from one story to another because sometimes parts of a book will have a dip and I'll get a little bit boring and I need I need to be in and out of it. I don't know if anyone else does that. And I also don't know if that's a good or a bad habit. I guess it's the kind of thing where if it works for you, it works for you. But I was gonna experiment with that and see if it improved my reading experience and to see if it made any difference in terms of how many books I read or how overwhelmed I felt when I was reading books. Before I get to the different booktube events and readathons and competitions that I'm participating in, I will first talk about something that I've spoken about in the previous videos on the channel, and that is the read-along that I'm hosting of East of Eden, which I'm very excited about. It seems like we have a good group of participants already joined into the Voxer. If you would like to join with us, there's plenty of time. I'll post the schedule in the description box below. The plan is to start on June 15th and finish around the third week of July or thereabouts. It's just a situation where you sign on to Voxer using the link in the description box that I will leave below and you join into a group chat and we talk once a week about the book. If there's enough people that want to and we decide in the chat, I could also try to organize a brief like a 45 minute Google Hangout or something to meet up and discuss book and see one another sort of meet over the internet <laughs> at the end of that period. But first off, if you're interested in reading East of Eden this summer with me and some other lovely people, please go ahead and send me a message on Voxer and I will add you to the group chat. So that is my first on my TBR. I can't wait to read this. The only other Steinbeck I've ever read before is Of Mice and Men. And people have told me how much they love this book. Many, many, many people have loved this book. 
and I feel like I might love it too. So the novel follows the intertwined destinies of two families, the Trasks and the Hamiltons, whose generations helplessly reenact the fall of Adam and Eve. Oh my god, it just sounds so good. So it's not meant to be autobiographical, but it is written from the time period. I think it 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 evokes a world that Steinbeck was familiar with, that he incorporates memories of his upbringing in the Salinas Valley in the early years of the 20th century. I don't know if I'm saying Salinas right or not. <laughs> memories of the war era and memories in general of that period. And the reason I'm mentioning that is because I am participating in the historical fiction reading challenge that is hosted by Shelley and I think someone else. <laughs> Hang on, I'll have to get back to you on that. I'll leave it in the description box below. I think this qualifies because one of the prompts on the bingo card is to read a classic work of historical fiction. When I get into my TBR for the historical fiction reading challenge, I will just post the bingo card so you can see. Ironically, the two other books that I'm reading for Group Reads and Book Club are also historical fiction, so I'm going to talk about them when I'm talking about that participation. But before we get to that, I just wanted to say that I forgot. <laughs> surprise, surprise, I forgot to mention in my recent video on channel plans that I had put my name in to volunteer to judge the semifinals of the booktube prize. I guess I just wasn't sure. It's not fair to say that I forgot. I wasn't sure if I was going to be selected or not. And in fact, I have been selected to, uh, it's a random selection. At uh, this time, maybe they didn't have as many volunteers, I guess maybe because it's the summer. Anyway, all that aside, I am judging group B, but I'm going to make a separate video about the books that I'm going to be judging in group B for the semifinals of the booktube prize. I need to get started because there are six of them. But lo and behold, one of them is also historical fiction. So I'll be talking about that in a few minutes. And the other one I picked up while I was in the UK. So I've got to grab it. Hang on a sec. So I will talk about all the books that I purchased when I was in the UK, which I have to say had to be kept to a minimum because of weight issues and weight restrictions. But I did pick up Enter Ghost, not particularly because I necessarily prefer the British cover but just because I've been wanting to get this book since I heard about it and it's still only available in hardcover as far as I know here in Canada so lucky for me because <laughs> I have to read it for the book two prize and of course I've been wanting to read it since I heard about it so it's happening everyone it's happening I'm not going to be able to read it in a hamlet at the same time which was a vlog I was thinking about doing I don't know because it's supposed to be even better if you know hamlet I wonder how that would affect your judging of it. Oh my gosh, choices, choices. Let me know in the comments below what you think on that particular topic. So many issues, so many decisions. Anyway, just for anyone who doesn't know about Enter Ghost, it's I think been shortlisted for the Women's Prize. It's a story about a woman, an actress named Sonia, who returns to Haifa to visit her sister Hanin after a long period away in the UK, years and years. She's just come out of a relationship that has fallen apart. She has been convinced by a woman named Miriam, a local director, she to join a production of Hamlet in the West Bank. So it sounds really good. And so I'm very excited to read it. The other one that I'm going to read in June, I'm going to read two, I think, in June and, and four in July. I know that's a weird split, but I just feel like I've lost already a week of June from being away and I really need to catch up. Plus, I want to do my, so I'll talk about the second one that I'm going to read when I talk about historical fiction books, but I also am going to be doing my college reading vlog this month. If I don't do it this month, I don't know when it'll get done and it has to happen. It absolutely has to happen. It's a project that I'm just very excited for. I spoke about it in my summer channel plans. These are the four books that I'm going to read and I think I'll read them probably this coming week before we start into East of Eden. Possibly it might take me a week and a half to read these and film the vlog of it. So the books are, and again, this could qualify as a historical fiction, Don DeLillo's White Noise, because it's set in the 80s. So we'll have to see. I love reading. So the college reading vlog is a series that I'm going to be doing every year where my daughter, who's a literature student, is has chosen books from her previous courses to a 
assigned to me <laughs> to read. She very kindly did that. And what I love about doing it is that I get to see all the insights of all of her notes in the book. She gives me her copies and I get to see all of her insights while I'm reading it. And it's just a kind of a special experience. I highly recommend reading a book that's passed on to you by someone else that they've completely marked up. It's a beautiful thing. She said it. she really, really enjoyed it. She thought it was really, really brilliant. It's about Jack Gladney, who teaches Hitler studies at a liberal arts, arts, at a liberal arts college in the middle America. A lethal black chemical cloud floats over their lives, an airborne toxic event unleashed by an industrial accident. I, I think it's meant to display like the chaos of modern life. The next one she recommended to me is The Boarding School Girl, by Nadezhda Kvoshinskaya. She did tell me how to pronounce it, but it was a while ago. So, and that is, I think, a pseudonym. This is a story about a young woman's education in the 19th, in 19th century Russia. It's the story of Lolenka, who encounters an exiled radical named Verit Vertitsin, and soon after begins to question her education at a private girl's school. It sounds really good. I'm very excited to read this and to read all of the notes, like this one. <laughs> very excited to read that. I've not, I've not heard of this author, so, and I had read, I've read quite a few Russians, so that'll be very good, I think. And then Marilyn Robinson's Housekeeping, which my daughter really enjoyed and is very curious to see what I think of. This is about Lucille who grew up haphazardly under the care of various relatives before settling down in small town Idaho with Sylvie, her eccentric and rather remote aunt. So that sounds fantastic. They all sound really, really good. And the last one is Ceremony, which, uh, is supposed to be incredible. Set in the insular world of the Laguna Pueblo Reservation, it tells the story of Tayo, an army veteran of mixed ancestry who returns to the reservation scarred by his experience as a prisoner of the Japanese. I mean, already in the in the inside flap, we have a lot of we have a lot of notes. So I'm excited to see what I get out of it. I think this is going to be great. I'm really looking forward to this. And that will be a vlog. I will vlog that experience of reading those four books. So that'll be really fun. So yeah, you, are, you guys are lucky. You have two vlogs coming your way. The UK vlog and the college reading vlog. One time in the next uh, six weeks or so. The next thing I'll talk about... Well, first, let's talk about this bingo card for the historical reading challenge and see what we can fit in. Because the other thing that I wanted to talk about is that it's also Pride Month. And I really wanted to get in some reading that was related to Pride Month. I have two books from my classics list that I was considering including that would work as historical fiction. I'll talk about those in just a minute. But that's only one box on this. That's only one box on this bingo card. And I'm already reading East of Eden. So... I don't know. Let's see how we do. I have a couple of more modern books also as possible options for reading for Pride Month. If I wanted to try to do a line on this bingo card, here it is. <laughs> we can see that read a classic work of historical fiction. Really the only place I have to go is across or down. So across is a free space and then it's read a work of historical fiction from the perspective of an extraordinary person. And I just gotta say it works because Lori and I have decided that we would like to, as our next buddy read, read Joan by Catherine J. Chen. I have been really wanting to read this book ever since I picked it up kind of Again, randomly, haphazardly in the bookstore. Of course, it's set in France in 1412 and tells the story of Joan of Arc. <laughs> but it's a new interpretation. It has an endorsement by Hilary Mantel on the front, so that tells you something. It just says that on the back, in Catherine J. Chen's hands, the myth and legend of Joan of Arc are transformed into a flesh and blood young woman, reckless, steel-willed, and brilliant. This meticulously researched novel is a sweeping narrative of her life from a childhood steeped in both joy and violence to her meteoric rise to fame at the head of the French army, where she navigates the perils of the battlefield and the equally treacherous politics of the royal court. Many are threatened by a woman who leads, and Joan draws wrath and suspicion from all corners, while her first taste of fame 
shame and glory leaves her vulnerable to her own powerful ambition. It sounds really good and it had very, very good reviews. And I think Laurie and I are gonna have a good time reading it together. That would make one, let's go back to our little bingo card here. So that would make one line down. Now, if I wanted to try to do another line, I'd have to go across the top, right? Across the top, we have read a work of historical fiction with a speculative or magical realistic element. So this is exciting because one of the books that I need to read for my book two prize judging is Lone Women by Victor Laval or Lavallee, I'm not sure how to pronounce. And this I think would qualify. I'm very excited to read this book because I've been hearing really good things about it. This is set in 1915 and it's about a girl, Adelaide, and she is in trouble. She has done something that is forcing her to flee California in a hellfire rush and make her way to Montana as a homesteader. She's got a trunk with her and she takes it wherever she goes and it's blocked at all times. And when she opens the trunk, people start to disappear. What? So it's magical suspense. That's how it's described. It's an unforgettable cast of adventurers who find horror and sisterhood in a brutal landscape and a portrait of early 20th century America like you've never seen. And at its heart is the gripping story of a woman desperate to bury her past or redeem it. Ah! This is exciting. I'm excited. Okay, so I just can't, I'm so excited. Okay, so that, but that is really a lot, right? So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Actually, that's not so bad, that's just eight books. That's only eight books, that's not so bad. Then <laughs> we have my other book club book, which I don't know if it would fit in the prompt going across, let's see. So back up, back to the bingo card. Read a work of historical fiction set in a different country to the one you're from. Oh, actually it would. fan freaking tastic The book that I'm reading with my book club, which again, I just am beside myself, so happy that we chose this one. Been wanting to read it for ages, is James by Percival Everett. I've heard nothing but amazing things about James. It's the story of Huckleberry Finn told from the perspective of Jim. And I think that's all we need to know. Written by Percival Everett. I think that's all we need to know. But I have heard that it is excellent. So that will give me two lines on the bingo card. That's nine books. That's really pushing it for me, I think. I think the most books I've ever read in a month is maybe 12. Let me know in the comments below what's the most read books you've read in a month. Actually, I don't know, maybe not. It's not a competition. <laughs> but you know, you can let me know. It'll make me feel a bit bad, maybe. I don't know, I don't want it to make me feel bad. Say it if it's, if it's not like 50, okay? If it's 50, that will make me feel really crummy. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be like two lines on the bingo card. I think that would be really pretty good. But, you know, I could do more. So looking at what I have in terms of historical fiction collections for celebrating pride, I think that that would work in read a work of historical mystery or historical romance. So in terms of romance, both of the classics that I have are about romances. The first one is Maurice by Ian e. Forster. I'm dying to read this book as well. So I read A Room with a View a few years ago, which I really enjoyed, but I've heard over and over again that Maurice is the book to read by Ian Forster. The novel was finished in 1914, but it wasn't published until he died in 1970. So even the history of the book is interesting from a pride, from a perspective of celebrating pride. It's the story of Maurice Hall, and I think it might be autobiographical. So it's a story of Maurice Hall, a privileged young man who finds himself increasingly attracted to his own sex through Clive, whom he encounters at Cambridge which I just was there, and through Alec, the gamekeeper on Clive's country estate, Maurice gradually experiences a profound emotional and sexual awakening. So I think that this would be fantastic for Pride and it works for if you're looking for a book and you're participating in the reading historical fiction challenge, this would also work. The other one that was on my 10 classics that I'd like to read in 2024 was The Well of Loneliness by Radcliffe Hall. This is about a lesbian. It was banned 
so it's also a banned book. It's uh, because if you're doing the challenge where you read banned books in 2024, this also qualifies. This was unpublished, so I would consider banned. But The Well of Loneliness was banned for obscenity when published in 1928. It became an international bestseller and for decades was the single most famous lesbian novel. It has influenced how love between women is understood for the 20th century and beyond. So this sounds really good as well. It's about Stephen. She's a, a child of aristocratic parents, a fencer, a horse rider, and a skiing caller. Stephen grows up to be a war hero, a best-selling writer, and a loyal, protective lover. But Stephen is a woman, and her lovers are women. As her ambitions drive her and society confines her, Stephen is forced into desperate actions. Oh, I can't choose. It's so hard to choose. I think I really want to read one of these. The other one that I was thinking of for reading for that prompt about romance is the New Life by Tom Crew. This was talked about a lot last year. The New Life is uh, set in the summer of 1894. It's about two men who begin writing a book in defense of homosexuality at the time, A Crime in Britain. John Addington and Henry Ellis live in London with their wives, Catherine and Edith, each inhabiting a complex Victorian marriage. John has a lover, a working class man named Frank, and Edith spends more time with her friend Angelica than she does with her husband. Shortly before their book is published, Oscar Wilde is arrested. But they have to decide whether to go on. Oh my gosh, this sounds gripping. Like this is a mystery and a love story, no? Ugh, how am I gonna choose? It's gonna have to be like a random number or something. I'm gonna have to use random number to choose between them. I don't know how I'm gonna choose you guys. All these books sound so good. So if I read one of those, then I will have done one, two. Oh no, to do the third line, I'd have to read a work of historical fiction from the perspective of an ordinary person. But then like we're into 10 books. I'm probably not gonna be able to read any more of that. This would be a really good choice for reading a book from the perspective of an ordinary person. And I've been wanting to read City of Girls. It sounds amazing and I've heard good things. This is about a girl who's just been kicked out of Vassar College in 1940 owing to her lackluster freshman year performance. She is sent to Manhattan to live with her aunt Peg, who owns a flamboyant theater. And there she is introduced to a whole cosmos, it says on the back, a whole world of unconventional and charismatic characters. And then she makes a mistake that results in a professional scandal and it will lead to her new understanding of the kind of life she craves, the kind of freedom it takes to pursue it. I bet this is so good because Elizabeth Gilbert is such a good writer. My favorite book by Elizabeth Gilbert is it's The Signature of All Things. That was such a good book. Oh my God, amazing. Let me know if you've read it in the, in the comments. So this is a bit long though. Like <laughs> I wanted to read this in the winter because I thought it would be really fun, but it's so long and I, I, I do feel that I have quite a lot. But if I get to it, I will have completed, I think, three. And that's pretty good because I'm not gonna get the whole bingo card done, right? So we can go that way with the TBR. The other way we can go with the TBR is just being happy with my two, <laughs> my two rows on the bingo card and choosing something more modern for Pride. Let me know in the comments below what you think. It's gonna be a hard choice, everyone. I also really wanna read these, so I'm in a bit of a kerfuffle, a conundrum. I feel like all my TBR videos are me just going, I wish I could read all of these books. <laughs> I feel like all my TBR videos are just me rhyming off books that I hope I'll get to, that I wish I could read, and it's hard. It's hard to choose, isn't it? Isn't it so hard to choose? I had The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet on another TBR in my recent past. Can't remember which one right now. Desperate to read it. It does have queer representation. So it's about Rosemary Harper, who joins the crew of The Wayfarer and her expectations are fairly low. It's a patched up ship that's seen better days. It's giving her a chance, of course, to adventure off into far corners of the galaxy, but also to escape her troubled past. I love that trope. She gets more than she bargained for because there is a crew of species and personalities on this ship. So that'll be interesting. Life on board is chaotic, but more or less peaceful, exactly what she wants until the crew are offered the job of a lifetime, the chance to build a hyperspace tunnel in, to a distant planet. And I think in the process, she meets another girl. I think that's what happens. Really want to read it. And then the last one that 
friends have recommended to me and that came up because Sarah had just done a challenge for, I think it was the 50th anniversary of Grey Wolf. Correct me if I'm wrong, Sarah. I had remembered that I want to read this memoir in The Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado, which a friend of mine who's an English teacher has been really <laughs> encouraging me to read for a while. So arguably it could be included in the college reading vlog making it five. So maybe I'll read this. It's supposed to be very good. A little bit difficult because it's about a lesbian relationship that is abusive, but it's supposed to be phenomenal. And the style that it's written in is supposed to be in really innovative. So maybe I will read that. <laughs> I have some decisions to make. I like filming these TBRs and presenting you with all of my conundrums. <laughs> so that you can you can provide me with some therapy in the comments and let me know what I should do. I'm really looking forward to being back and, and enjoying the summer and doing a lot of reading. And yeah, I'm just so happy to be back. Had a fantastic time though in the UK. Can't wait to show you all my adventures. Like I said, if you're not following me on Instagram, you're missing out on those adventures. So make sure you do. And I'll see you very soon in my next video on the selections for the semifinals in my grouping, Group B for the BookTube Prize. So I'll see you soon. Bye for now. I mean, I guess I could still maybe do that in July. Maybe. No, I think not. I think I'm gonna just read it for the BookTube Prize where uh, he lives with his fourth wife, wife, I can't speak, read a, a work of history, a read of the, the other one that was on my uh, 10 classes, 10 classics, yeah, I read A Room of One's Own, I've read A Room of One's Own a couple years ago, no, I'm saying, not A Room of One's Own.